Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me here in Las Vegas for SEMA 2022. It is that time to head in and go and check out the highlights and there are a lot of different YouTubers and social media personalities who are showing their cars right here. We're going to go and see cars from the likes of TJ Hunt, Stradman, Amelia, you name it, plus a whole host of different hypercars through the various halls. The two Zenbos are here. There's a Sian Roadster, the Apollo IE, there's also a Huayra, plenty more. So let's head straight on in here at SEMA 2022 and go and see what we can find. Right here in SEMA Central is TJ Hunt's Veilside RX-7, rebuilding the Fast and the Furious RX-7. But this is SEMA Central, right in the heart of all of the action between the various halls, where lots of the interviews and things take place. This is the car, obviously, that's had its journey through TJ's video channel, seeing everything being rebuilt and then revealed in the new colour with the green underglow to match, in fact, here on the RX-7 with the full body kit package by the exhaust on the back of it as well. I recognize this one, the General Lee from One Whistling Diesel. I filmed this car with Cody when I visited his property only a week or so ago. This is his 1,600 horsepower 1969 Charger with a smashed front windshield, probably the only car at SEMA with broken front glass, which is kind of funny, but huge build, 1,600 horsepower, 316 speed. And of course on show here, it was just being loaded into the trailer when we saw it as part of the walk around of his work shop out there in Tennessee but yeah here it is in Las Vegas well that stands out a mile away DDE's McLaren 720 GTR seeing this car it's been through quite the wars recently but daily driven exotic 720 like the P1 GTR with this wing and those massive tailpipes sitting out the back hopefully film something in detail with this with Damon and Dave at some point but sitting here alongside an SVJ STO what else do we have F8 Tributo just behind but the colors of this thing are truly outstanding. This is, of course, Ken Block's Hoonicorn Mustang, 1960s Mustang, running something like 1,400 horsepower that is featured in the Gymkhana series. Absolutely ridiculous. Wide body, of course, full, stripped out, race car style. Not what you expect from this kind of thing. Hello again, old friend. This is the Zenbo TSRS that came to visit my garage, to visit the Museum, that pushed me over the edge to purchase one, we could say. I drove it again, actually, at Hypercar Invitational out at Laguna Seca. It's been here in the US for a number of different events, one of the 10 TSRSs, and I believe one of two that are actually here at SEMA. This car in the metallic blue paint with the silver accent trim against the carbon fiber just looks immense. But of course, we wanted to create something a little bit different with mine which is why we went so extreme with the Lila Perla more purple with the lime green accents. But regardless, it's cool to see this thing again, see the attention that it's getting out here at the show. Now this is quite the project. This is Rob Darm's RX-7 with the four rotor that was revealed here. 1240 horsepower, 1240 horsepower, complete custom everything. All wheel drive system from the R35 GTR, full setup. And in fact, here's the man himself. Hey. How you doing? Good, how are you, man? All good? Wonderful, wonderful. What do you think? It's cool. Congrats. It, thank you very much. It's, it's my attempt at like a, a random dude building like something in the homage of like a, a supercar like the Koenigsegg. <laughs> yeah. With a weird, weird, weird engine. <laughs> well, four rotor, RX-7, all wheel drive. Yes. Like, so how long? I mean, you've been yeah. working on these things for years. Yeah, this thing, seven years from like, con you know, concept, executive summary to a full body. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, thank you. Seriously impressive. Color links back, I know, to the original look when you had yep. it as a teenager. Yep. So I was part of it exposed just to show the, the color of his uh, kind of an homage to the original. Uh, because this is actually the last moment. This is the first moment you see this color and the last moment because I'm going to a full carbon body. Yeah. So, so it, it'll be carbon. That'll be cool. Awesome. Well, congrats. Yes. Impressive. I've stopped here at the Anderson Composites booth because I previously had their front wings on my Focus RS. They make some awesome carbon fiber work, also for the GT500. But take a look at this full carbon bodied C8 Corvette. Entire carbon body, wide body, aggressive. Archer's louver is obviously lowered. This thing is wild. Well, how about this for timing? We've got Chris Fix here with his E46 race car giving a live demonstration of changing the airbox to a crowd 
watching on feels like the videos have come into real life. Chris doing his thing, showing everyone with his E46. This is a car that we've seen on the channel before. This is Amelia's Corvette C8. It was about a year and a half ago that I stopped by in California and we filmed this car, a twin turbo version of the eighth generation Corvette. They had to do extensive work to get around all of the computer systems and the like to put out some big power, but they did. They got it out to the drag strip, made it the fastest eighth generation Corvette in the world. And it's here in the outside area at the Las Vegas convention. Center. This is McSnod 765LT Spider. Very nice color. BBS FIRs as well. Good complement to that. Yellow calipers, yellow interior details. One of 765 of the 765LT Spiders. This is Supercar Driven's Liberty Walk Lamborghini Huracan. Just completed in time for SEMA. And alongside it is the latest generation Liberty Walk Aventador. Just look at this thing. Look at the shape of the wing. Very much LMP style. Makes an SVJ almost look a little bit normal in comparison comparison you could say very wild pair of lambos oh and there's a 911 turbo s right alongside here at valvetronic design stand we have alex Choi's audi rs6 seen this car before in the magenta pink with the wheels obviously valvetronic designs making the exhaust systems also on the m3 that we have just there plus this car amongst others this stands out this is the tr supercars speed 12 turbo effectively a car that tvr never actually really made not a single part on it from tvr it looks wild and Larry and if I squeeze round towards the back also another UK plate out here which is kind of fun as well this Nissan Z belongs to Dustin Williams he's just fitted a new set of raised wheels to it it's on their stand here I drove one of these for the first time on my last visit here in the US and experienced quite how much the new Nissan Z actually offers you for the money it's really quite impressive quick shout out to Superformance I always hear good things about these building the GT40s and the Cobras but of course, with my slight bias towards Ford GTs, no surprise, I'd want to stop by to have a quick look at this, especially at this car, that really dark navy blue with the yellow accents. That's just awesome. This is another car that we know quite well, the Stradman's Lamborghini Aventador Coupe, which is undergoing a transformation in front of the eyes of the onlookers here at SEMA from its original orange paintwork into the new lime green wrap. Now, about three years ago, I actually joined James to ski behind this car in the snow in Utah. He was pulling me along. I was doing my best to ski behind it. Very fond memories of the fun we had out doing that. It's been through a number of different iterations over the years. One of the two Aventadors that he has, because he also has his Rosa Acantis Pirelli edition Aventador Roadster, which he cut and wide bodied himself in his own warehouse and then painted and fully retrimmed as well. But cool to see this, which he sent out and is going to be driving back towards Utah. We might even be joining that drive. So watch this space alongside it. The Mustang Mach-E low and actually sitting on rotative form wheels as well and then this the crazy taco bell 720s clearly senna gtr inspired look at the design around here the flicks at the front the hood that massive spoiler out towards the back i saw that very car at triple f's event out in columbus ohio earlier in the year the event two and it's now here on the stand in front of some of the others literally as you can see the app being installed in front of our eyes here at the show there is a bond car here we have the jaguar xkr from die another day in green missiles at the front everything else as it was per the movie this is one of the weirdest cars at the show new bmw m4 except you've noticed what's a little bit different about this it's a pickup they've put in a flatbed instead of the coupe rear of an m4 and it happens to be this chrome blue as well that's actually a lot of work. That's really quite impressive. So gone are your back seats and your normal trunk space in its place of pickup. There's something actually really cool about that. The ute style that they've created with this based on the new generation M cars of the M3 and M4 with the often discussed kidney grills. I'm just taking a moment actually to take this in. That's not the car that I was expecting to see out here at SEMA. Just come and take a look at it from the back as well. Get the full angle of that. What on earth? I, I'm, I'm lost for words. Who doesn't love neon lighting? I would absolutely love to have some of these things in the garage, all officially licensed. Ford authorized service, the Shelby GT500 front end. We've actually got the Shelby Cobra down there as well. All the different brands, all the different neon lights. Those look so good. Now here we have one of the standout cars of the SEMA show, the Lamborghini Sian Roadster. They only made 19 Sian Roadsters alongside the 63 Sian Coupes with the removable roof panels on the Aventador completely removed for this permanent 
permanently open Barchetta, but it's the paint work on this car. The paint fade, and Lamborghini were very careful to make sure that all of the Sians have a completely different look. This entire rear section is this tinted dark greeny turquoise carbon fiber which then fades through to the bright vibrant turquoise metallic paint at the front all complemented with the golden accents that you can see around of course the wheels as well and the color scheme also brought onto the interior with some of the details on the central tunnel the stitching and piping that you can see around as well this is lamborghini's first hybrid hypercar 6.5 litre naturally aspirated v12 combined with the super capacitor just over 800 horsepower and it looks absolutely incredible one of the highlights here at SEMA for sure, and it's part of a very special collection. In fact, last year I filmed the owner's Bugatti Devo out here, and previously I filmed the Vision Gran Turismo and a number of other cars from the collection as well. But this is so cool to see here at SEMA. This Traxxas remote control car yeah, yeah. could go over 100 miles per hour, faster than actual cars. That's ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. 100 plus miles an hour, all wheel drive, 750 bucks. I'm actually quite tempted by one of those. The hypercar fun continues with this Pagani Huayra Roadster BC, one of 40 Roadster BCs. Navy blue exposed carbon throughout the bodywork, the black exposed carbon with the red pinstriping details and the exposed blue sections for that stripe down the center of it. We've got the VinWiki stripe because Ed Bolian was doing some of his meetups over here as well. But the Roadster BC I drove for the first time recently. We've got the snorkel here, the carbon roof panel, the target roof panel that you can lift off is in place as well. And obviously all of the artwork and beauty that you have with the design of a Pagani in one of the final models really of the Huayra before the arrival of Utopia. It wouldn't be a SEMA show without a car on the Rag Company stand from Freddy to Varish. This is his Mark IV Supra, which I think I've actually seen previously when I visited his Wrench Everyday HQ over in Florida. Finished now in the blue paintwork with the contrast interior. Really gonna like that. Looks very, very clean. Top effort of bringing this back, restoring full glory out of it, as he always does with his different projects. There is an Apollo IE here. This is from Hyper NFT in California. One of the 10 Apollo IEs in total. I drove one for the first time recently, actually, at Spa Francorchamps in Belgium with my friend Shin Mike Yin. But the Apollo IE launched a couple of years ago. Totally, totally bonkers in its design. And this car in the full exposed carbon has the contrast with the gloss sections over the top and the satin sections around the bottom at the front. But the design is very much inspired by insects, the shape of various different things. You've got the seat pads directly into the carbon fiber tub. You've got a naturally aspirated V12 right behind you. You've got this massive wing with the shark fin spine that runs down towards the back. Then here you've got those three parts of the exhaust system. You've got this diffuser hanging low and mean out here as well. The open areas, the exposed style of it all. It's one of only 10 in the world and awesome to see it here at the show. This Nissan Frontier, which is literally here on the Nissan stand itself, belongs to Chris Christina Roki, who you might know from TikTok. She's got a few million followers sharing videos over on there. It is noticeably lower and wider than a standard car and of course is wrapped. And she has been known to wrap a lot of her cars on her own. Fair play, credit where credit is due for doing that. And maybe she's even done this one herself as well. I'm not entirely sure, but very, very cool to have your own car on the official manufacturer stand here at SEMA. So fair play to Christina for that. This is another car that we have seen previously on the channel, Alex Choi's Unicorn. This is V4.2 completed this year. It has had a number of wildly different looks over the years. It was here last year with a crazy chameleon color scheme from Inozotec. In previous years though, you might remember, it used to have the external roll cage, the pink noodles all around the outside of it. It now wears the plate, what STO? And you can see the STO inspired design of the arches like the Super Trofeo race car, engine bay cover, roof snorkel, massive wing back here as well, hence the plate. The exhaust at the back will pop flames on demand. It makes the most ridiculous fire out at the back of it. And if you come around towards the front, a fun thing you might have seen, that's actually a wireless charging pad for your phone. You can charge your phone on the front of Alex Choi's Lamborghini. We've also alongside got his Miata, which was completed last minute. This was a project that literally started like a week ago to make the Miata race car that is presented right here in this new limited edition color as well. You've got the seats, everything stripped out inside, full cage, NOS on the back. You've also got a gigantic spoiler and diffuser. Typical crazy project. Would not expect any less from the team there. If I come round past a quick sneak peek of what's under the hood, we also have a pink Ferrari F40. 
Yes, a baby pink F40 is on the stand here at an Ozatec. Look at that. I mean, if it was painted, that would be pretty out there. It is a wrap. It is still pretty out there, to be completely honest. Certainly would ruffle some feathers, I'm sure. Attract quite the attention. The red seats, especially against the pink on the exterior. That is, to be honest, a little bit crazy to see. Then look at that flip chameleon colour and look at the wheels. Kind of like the turbine wheels that you get on the SLRs, Mercedes McLaren SLR. Wide body kit on here and full on fighter jet style exhaust tailpipes from AGX, Avant Garde Exotics, out in California. Stopped by with the team there a few times in the past as well. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. That is an extreme event door. I have tracked down the other of the two Zenvo TSRSs that's out here. This one, of course, the white car that I filmed when it was at Topaz quite a while back, over two years ago now. But this car in the pearlescent white paintwork with the exposed navy carbon, the royal blue pinstripe accents and details that you see throughout. A very, very cool thing inside. It was really taking a proper look around this. They got me started on considering the idea and focusing on the car a little bit more. So nice to see this as well after seeing it last, also at Laguna Seca a couple of months back. Tech Art are here at SEMA, their first time actually at the show in over a decade, presenting the GT Street R convertible. Now I took a look around the GT Street R at their base in Germany, and it's alongside the aero kits for the Taycan and the 911 Carrera S as well. But this is the full 800 horsepower upgraded Turbo S convertible, limited to only 87 cars in total, mixture of coupes and convertibles. You have all of the aero parts on the exterior, as you can see, carbon louvre, in fact, full carbon bumpers, front and rear, some visible carbon against the navy blue metallic paintwork on this. 21 inch wheels at the front, five lugs as opposed to centre locks. You've got 22 inch at the rear. Let's come towards the back. The carbon spoiler back here, obviously 911, rear engined, twin turbocharged flat six, up significantly from standard power with the Tech Art exhaust system as well. But have a look at the interior of this one of the 87, the navy blue finished with all of the white accents and contrasts. This is actually stunning. Lots of carbon fiber, the distinct custom edition plaque there on the dashboard as well. New steering wheel, Tech Art do full retrims and do a wonderful job of it. This looks really very, very nice. Only a handful of these are actually remaining for sale. Alongside it, we've got the Taycan 4S with the aerodynamic package. You can see the new bumpers, wheels, skirts. If we come around towards the rear, again, the add-ons and the lip spoiler. Then I'm gonna squeeze through this way to Tech Art's 911 Carrera S and the satin white with the Miami blue accents and the wheels. Wing back here with these clear upright struts that I've seen over in Germany before and all the other details featuring on the exterior package plus the new steering wheel that they've given for this car as well. But cool to see them approaching again the North American market with a presence here at SEMA. Quick mention of one of the Ford GTs that's here. We've got the carbon fiber wheels on this car against the metallic gray paintwork. I tend to prefer a little bit more color into these things. But in grayscale, I guess it just accentuates the shapes and look of the Ford GT, especially with the flying buttresses. It looks immense. I bet you didn't expect to see one of these here, a Batmobile Tumbler. This is from Alex Lambo Jesus. We're actually just catching up to have a chat about this crazy contraption that he has had put together. Quite different from the Lamborghinis he's more normally known for, but quite literally, Batman's car right here, the Tumbler. Come and have a better look in fact, because there's a whole lot going on in here with all of the screens and displays and everything. A massive central tunnel, but built over its own chassis and setup by some guys in the know from the movie industry. So yes, I didn't think I was gonna be filming Batman's car today, but here we have it, the Batmobile Tumbler. This has caught my eye. Here at SEMA Battle of the Builders, what at first glance is a 300 SL Gullwing, up close, is really quite different. I believe this is based on an SLK, but of course with the body and styling of the iconic Gullwing. Up front, we have a V8, for sure, an AMG V8. We've got the little plaque here, S Club LA 300 SL. Not too much information, beautiful paintwork and the bright orange contrast against that. Yes, a few more giveaways in there of what it's actually based on. The wide arches, the luggage briefcase stored away in the back, the briefcase in there filled with money because why not? This is actually really cool, obviously, resto mod style. And you can see drawing quite the crowd around it. Look at that carbon fiber splitter, but with the styling of a 300 SL. In theory, I shouldn't like this, but I love it. The color certainly does quite a lot for me. That's awesome. That's, yeah, that stands out a lot. This is one of the stars of the show, a hot rod F1 crossover. Look at this, look at the slicks. 
the brake cooling ducts, the engine with the pumpkins popping out the top, side exhaust. This is one of the standout cars at this year's SEMA in the Battle of the Builds segment. Look at that. That's some serious effort to put this together. This Integra belongs to Sarah Choi. She's created the design for it, sponsored by Acura. Put all of this together. A quick stop right here at the SeaTech stand, who are, of course, supporters of the Shmi Museum. I rely upon SeaTech smart chargers for all of the Shmi mobiles. And this, by the way, you might recognize is one of the Eleonores from the Gone in 60 Seconds movie, one of the original hero cars used in the production of the movie. There have been many replicas since, but this is one of the last surviving actual show cars. It's sitting also on top of the Far and Gold show car pad. I've met the team from Far and Gold before as well. In fact, we parked my Senna on top of one at one point and of course this is relying upon a SeaTac charger to ensure the battery is kept in good health as I will always recommend for these cars. I was using SeaTac products long before working officially with the team but what a cool thing to actually have here. One day I would love to add a Mustang of this era to the collection. That is very very special. I'm taking a look at this as we get towards the end of the day because this is actually owned by Kevin Hart. He was here to unveil it. 1969 Plymouth Roadrunner nicknamed Michael Myers. All of the information and details down there built by Salvaggio Design. Resto mod if you will on the 1960s Roadrunner. Carbon fibre hood, massive power, awesome to see. Here in the Toyo Tread Pass, check this out, the 300 SLs continue, Gullwing and the Speedster as well and plenty of other builds and cars that's been getting a whole lot of attention as you would imagine and I'm also going to try and sneak down this way because I want to point out this RX-7 with a V12. Yes, a 12-cylinder engine in there. SL73 engine I believe in fact, the engine that you find in a Pagani Zonda squeezed into an RX-7. Yes, they actually did that. This is B is for Builds R34 slash R35. Effectively, Chris took a wrecked R35 GTR and rebuilt it into an R34 on the R35 chassis. You would never realize this wasn't an R34 at first glance. Full upgrades with the carbon fiber boot lid, trunk lid, and the spoiler at the back. But yeah, underneath, this is an R35. This is not an R34. He has a reputation for some very out there projects. And this is certainly a perfect example of making that happen. Full carbon for the bonnet, for the hood up front as well. And of course the iconic purple paintwork to complement that. So yes, R34, R35, or as he codenames it, R69. Complete mashup, but what a result. Well, check out this little lineup of cars. SF90 with wide body carbon louvres, lower splitter, full carbon bodied Aventador, complete exposed carbon fiber throughout on the Aventador. Next to that, Rolls-Royce Cullinan, Similar treatment, very, very big wheels, carbon fiber bodywork. Then we have the Ferrari F8 Spider, again, with a little bit of a difference. Look at how wide this thing is. Look at how much it cuts in at the side, around towards the rear arches. Then we have the McLaren 720S. Similar theory, again, with the bodywork and design on this. Look at the spoiler around towards the back. Those are some of the most out there tuning projects I have ever seen, especially on this, the yellow paintwork with the yellow interior. What a stand. The five cars there, that's something to behold. This is another of Ken Block's cars that is here. We have his Turbo Monster, which is a replica, 730 horsepower, Audi Sport Quattro. This is our second car from TJ Hunt, the Street Hunter Nissan Z. First time completely redesigning the bumpers on a car. The Z here, as you can see, with a totally new look to it after presenting a number of Street Hunter cars before in the past. In fact, I'm gonna try and squeeze down towards the side to come and show you from the back of this as well with the massive wing mounted on the boot lid the ducktail just below that and of course the design here as well really cool the tj and the street hunter team putting these together and being able to showcase them here and launch it to the world on the al13 stand we have the dde svj the car that we drove with all the way from toronto to miami on the gumball 3000 but now in a new look although i will never forget how much the sound out of this thing completely destroyed eardrums throughout that drive. The livery has been changed though, a new look for the SVJ for Damon and Dave in a car that is completely synonymous with the DDE channel and awesome to see as well here alongside some other very special things on the AL13 wheel stand. More from Mr. Block
rock in the form of the Hoona Pigasus, which was built to head to Pikes Peak, the world's most famous hill climb. A car that very much pays tribute to the legendary Pink Pig Porsche race cars. Look at this thing. Obviously retro meets insane amounts of power, meets, well, it's a wing really that happens to come with a car, I would say, as opposed to a wing on the back of a car. Look at this thing. Look at the size of the splitter at the front, the aero, the wide body setup the livery and design, obviously Ken Block and the Hoonigan team always creating some pretty out there things and this absolutely part of all of that. With the Las Vegas sunset, I have got to point out this truck that is running on tracks. Yeah, as you do, look at the underpinnings of that. Could get pretty much anywhere out in the wilderness, out in the snow. That girl with the big truck. <laughs> quite literally. This McLaren P1 is actually wrapped. It's a new wrap from a Nozotec, which is very reminiscent of the color stream paint jobs from MSO, McLaren Special Operations. In fact, it reminds me of one in the UK in Pacific color stream with all of these purples and blues. But come and have a look as we catch the light on it. Look at the goldy orange colors that start to come through on this particular car. One of 375 McLaren P1 sitting down in race mode with that wing extended, that bowl that it has over the rear deck. BBS wheels on it also so, but yeah, that's a wrap. It reminds me of the McLaren Sabre that I filmed recently out in California as well, where you get all of these different colors, even the greens as we come around towards the front as well. But no, that is a new wrap from Inozotec. Well, I'm a little bit too late to catch the Hennessy Venom F5, which has now been popped under the cover here for the end of the day. The sun is starting to set here in Las Vegas, but what an extraordinary SEMA. We've seen a whole lot of epic cars from names that you know, plus all of the hypercars, the likes of the Huayra Roadster BC, the Apollo IE, the Sian Roadster, the two Zenvos, the Ford GT. There was actually another Ford GT, but we've seen cars from many familiar names and faces. I believe Adam LZ was also out in the drift area with something from his collection also, but plenty to take in. What a day it's been. What an awesome show here at SEMA, but that's it for this time. Thank you very much for watching as always, guys, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.